alluded to Bill Connolly's ESPN, and I think this is an insider story, about the top 180, I keep saying 100, top 80 quarterbacks in college football since 2000. This is an impossible undertaking. There are still different parts of eras where the ball and the stats are different. This is in no way anyone would just say, oh, that's right, I get every one of them. Some are too high, some are too low. I even have my feelings on it. We're going to go over this top 10, dissect it a little bit, and then get into those who are not a part of the 10 and where they are if they made the top 80. So this is from Bill Connolly. He's traveling today. And uh, Baker Mayfield at number one. Um, I, I think people would maybe like debate this because Baker didn't win a national title, but man, his numbers are ridiculous. And uh, kind of the the first guy on the uh, Lincoln Riley train uh, to to get that rolling. Right? Well, kind of, he was the Heisman yeah. winner. Yeah, yeah, he was the first, like the first one of the like. Here we go. But yeah, I I don't disagree with this. Like Baker was. Elite, like the only thing he didn't do was win the national title, but won the Heisman, was fantastic, and yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have a, a total problem with it. I mean, like maybe would I put Vince Young at number one? Yeah, but again, it's not my list. Um, yeah, I mean, Baker had a really good career, and so this is uh, obviously a very subjective thing, and uh, I haven't dove into his reasonings as to why I'm going to try to do that, I guess, as we play along, because I haven't read the article, but um, I know this is kind of like the controversial opinion he had last year. What was it? Uh, There's something sa- sa- exactly like this. Yes. It was like at the yeah. teams, though, I think. It was or Heisman Trophy winners something or like that. Yeah. It's the same thing, and he broke it down and explained as to why and, and how subjective it is, really. Uh, so I don't agree that Baker's the best quarterback of the aughts, but uh, I can understand numbers-wise and impact-wise how he is you know, certainly near the top of the conversation. But for me, like national titles matter a great deal, and the fact that he didn't win one I think knocks him down a peg. But career-wide, did he have a longer, more sustained impact than – than some of the others, then yes, he did. But, um, yeah, that's an interesting choice there at number one. One uh, line in his summary of Mayfield, Newton, Young, and Burrow had the best seasons. Mayfield had the best career. So there he is uh, among the top 80 at number one is Baker Mayfield. At number two, he was in the news over the weekend with that seven-on-seven tournament where there was a, a, a fracas. Cam Newton came in. Uh, was it Florida? Another guy that bounced around because Baker Mayfield initially was at Tech, ended up at Oklahoma. Newton was at Florida. We know the story there. Went Juco, Cam Newton, Auburn at number two. Yeah, and look, some of these guys are really just for a year, like he says, and Cam Newton's 2010 was elite. That's why Baker was around for like six years. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. What, yeah, part of what helps him out. He threw yeah. for 14,607 yards. And yeah. One of the other notes about Mayfield – Oklahoma, which dominated most of the history of the Big 12, had not won a conference title since 2010 when he arrived at OU, and he won three straight conference titles, was a part of the college football playoff a couple of different times. I mean, like, here's the deal. I mean, so he points out, and and rightfully so when talking about Baker, because I've got it now, um, Newton, Young, and Burrow had the best seasons. Mayfield had the best career. I mean, that's that's the way to sum up this list and why Baker's number one. And doing it that way, then that's that's fair. But also, the way it's framed, you're going to see the headline and people are going to go, what the hell? He didn't win a national title, but he had 14,607 passing yards. Mm-hmm. Cam Newton had 2,908. So he had 12,000 or nearly 12,000 more passing yards than Cam Newton. Granted, he played in a great deal more games <laughs> so that's the big b- biggest reason as to why but uh yeah i mean baker just had such a long and and you know voluminous career whereas cam newton was like a boom very much a we focus on 2010 basically and that was him and going crazy and being one of the greatest players in a single run and so yeah he was more of a flash in the pan than than mayfield so if you're justifying it based on that then yeah that makes sense cam newton Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest single-season supernova the sport has ever seen. He was incredible. Yeah. And, uh, and let me just say, I'm glad that computer theft is the one felony that was acceptable under Urban Meyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because if he, had taken, if he had taken over for Tebow, holy cow. Yep.
Yeah, but, yeah. And that, he's got a lot of attention for that incident over the weekend. I don't know if you guys saw because oh, yeah. Twitter's Twitter's Twitter. So like they just immediately are like Cam's a boss, and you know he's he's a badass. Like, did you read the actual like the other people there on the other side, like the people he was fighting with? Mm-hmm. Did you hear what they were saying yeah. about it? Well, basically they're youth football coaches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. They said that uh, they've run into Cam in the past and their teams have beaten his and it's always kind of been testy and that they were out there playing their game or whatever. And I guess that the tournament organizers like put them together, probably knowing that some stuff would pop off. Not that extent, but um, they in, in their eyes, they weren't he was supposed to be playing them, but they just got put together. And so like the chemicals, combustible elements came together and I think they won or, or whatever happened. Cam started like John and was talking a bunch of S and uh, just acting kind of uh, in, in their eyes, uh, like Cam Newton and kind of like a clown. And you know what? I can totally see that. And that's kind of what popped it all off. It wasn't like he got jumped out of nowhere by just a couple of dudes trying to make a name for themselves off of Cam Newton's back, which is what my initial thought was. I was like, dudes are just jumping Cam Newton for TikTok. I think yeah. they went up knowing that there was probably going to be something. And, and it, they, they went up on uh, the stairs, and Newton and, was at the top. And, yeah, I'm sure they were both all barking. No, they regretted it. They regretted it, and they know it was a bad look. But it wasn't like that just was like dudes trying to get Cam yeah. Newton. It was, it was was He was talking a bunch of trash and it started building and building, and it finally just popped off. And that's that's where that video came. I, from. I know the guy in the duffel bag, or the uh, the, the the what do you call it, the, the thing on your back when you backpack. Carry, backpack. A backpack. He had no chance, man. He was all tied up and had nothing to do. Uh, he had no chance. But what do they call uh, that pack on your back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What is that thing on your foot? But shoe. But. Carl Reed, who I have a lot of respect for, he does some kind of philosophical things on Twitter. He uh, he mentioned that one of the other issues here are these coaches who coach these youth teams, whether it's AAU or 7-on-7, seven seven, they they get a little bit of the hair on the back of their neck when they uh, when they go up against someone like Cam, too. That they, they don't like him hanging around their league, so to speak. And there's no who you can be as a coach or whatever. So there's a little bit of that, yeah. too, a lack of respect or a little we, bit of territorial yeah. turf rights yeah. there, Craig, too. Craig, we were we were about 50 feet away from Cam's maybe yeah. at uh, podcast yeah. at, the, at, the at Radio Bowl. Row. And let me just tell you, he enjoys attention. Oh, yeah, for I mean, sure. So you yeah, know that duh. anyway because, I mean, like, he was dressed like – You don't dress like the Wicked Witch if you don't like yeah, attention I know. to some it's, extent. It, yeah. I thought he was at a Hocus Pocus convention. But <laughs> he – yeah, I mean, he. there were a couple of days where he, like, walks past and you're like – Man, you have to be some kind of confident to just yeah. Well, <laughs> no, he's 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 he's, he's past confident. Like yeah. I, I think so. I, I just wanted to point that out because I, I saw the initial reaction. It was all like Cam's getting jumped and people are coming after him. It's like I think he was the aggressor in some cases in, in this whole thing. So yeah, all parties were guilty to some extent. But anyways, he was a great college quarterback and uh, that that uh, national championship run at Auburn was super special uh, for sure. And and what a you know, roller coaster his college career was, but as far as impactful, I can see, you know, the positioning there at number two, although there's definitely some debates to be had with the guys that follow him. Well, uh, by the way, RG3, when he had a comment about the Newton, the, the, the fighting or whatever was going on, he led Auburn to a natty with one offensive lineman that started an NFL game. No sets, uh, no one else recording an NFL reception, rush attempt, or pass attempt on his team that he had that led Auburn to the national title. Number three, I could see where a lot of people thought that maybe at the top of this list it could be Vince Young. He had to go through uh, learning and also Texas understanding. Let him go. Just let him go play. At number three, had the incredible maybe best season. Talk about uh, single seasons. Vince Young in 2005, but even before then, was as good as anyone has ever been. But Bill Conley points it out that like halfway through his career, everybody was like, "Well, this guy can't play." Yeah, you know, they're just he's 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 just an athlete. And then, yeah, I, I think it, it just was it was one of I mean, it's the the greatest single coaching move in Mac Brown's car- very illustrious career uh, to just go. It's not well, moving him to safety. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> not moving to safety or not. And, and deciding, like, what happens if we stop, like, trying to make him something that we, we want him to be as opposed to what he is? And when that happened and they just let a guy who was really hard to tackle, had a really big arm, and was surrounded by one of the best teams talent-wise, top to bottom, in the history of college football, 
I mean, top to bottom, one to 85 scholarships, that was one of the best ever. And when you said, okay, let's just, we maybe don't have to worry about, you know, doing things with a, a guy who's maybe not as good of an athlete as Vince as you would if, you know, even for a, a guy like Major Applewhite, you have to maybe protect him more, and he was really good. But when you can let Vince spread his wings and fly, let and all these him. guys are, yeah, yeah it, it just worked out really well for them. Well, I mean, once he was able to develop his passing to go along with the athletic ability and the running, uh, it was just an unstoppable force. And, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe you say that a Cam Newton had a better single season or – uh, you know, maybe others you want to throw into to what kind of comparisons, but nobody had a more storybook ending, uh, final memorable play like Vince. At least for for me, that's burning my brain. I know there's been some other finishes and and games that stick out certainly over the years, but that one's just like Vince at the Rose Bowl. I mean, that's like going to be played for the next thousand years on, on every college football national championship broadcast. Just a an incredible moment uh, for a school that was aching and and dying for a national championship had gone three decades and had watched Oklahoma get their mojo back with Bob Stoops and win one a few years prior. And so that was just a, that was an ultra special moment for, for Texas and he was an ultra special player. And so, yeah, definitely not surprised to see him hovering around the number one spot, but uh, given Bill's reasoning, I can understand why he's at number three. At number four, Tim Tebow, Florida. Uh, a bunch of stats. You can put that together. Another guy that was he, – he threw for a lot more yardage than maybe you thought. Was not a great passer, but was good. He had the leadership and all of that. The, the, the mojo could run the ball well. And, uh, of course, was a short yardage back, too, uh, with what he could do with his power. At number four, Tim Tebow. Let's do five burrow and then see if you could take those five. How would you move any of them out – but then we'd have to replace him with somebody. But Burrow had the amazing – what year was that, 19, Garrett? Yep, 19. 2019, just in another guy that transferred, which we, of course, can do this for most everybody, not Young or Tebow, but another guy that transferred from another school at Ohio State. Burrow and Cam Newton are a little similar to me in this list in that, you know, Burrow was really only that, that one year. I mean, he was, he was good the year before. I mean, he was fine. Like, but nobody thought going into that year that he was going to, even with the people around him, have the kind of year that he had. But, look, sometimes it's just about getting the opportunity to play. And he didn't have that Ohio State. So he got at LSU. He got a year under his belt. And then in the last year, he became the Joe Burrow that we know now because he found that swagger and he found that whatever it is about him that allowed him to do that. And yes, he had Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson and all these gigantic super studs around him. And that defense was, was very lethal. All of those things are still true. But that team was still the same. Under like they were, that was how the team was for ten years before Joe Burrow, and he was the guy who elevated them. So yeah, he um, when you talk about single seasons and like what it was, his was amazing. And yeah, he's certainly one of the best QBs of the odds because of what he did with a team that had the same level of talent for for all this time yep. and was never could not find a good quarterback to save their lives, and he was the dude. Uh, yeah, I, the, the more we go down this list, the harder it's me to, to justify Baker. I don't care what he had total. I mean, th these dudes won, like had like years that are unforgettable, national championship runs. I, I don't know. I, I think that trumps having played like three years longer than most guys. That's just my opinion. This is subjective, obviously. But the, the more we go down, I'm just thinking of that Newton. And, and they're all like years, really. They're ex maybe a couple of years, whereas Baker's is this career-long thing. So I get it. But, man, it's – it's hard to place him above Vince and Burrow and Tebow. Like, I, I don't think I could have done that if I was doing my own list. So to answer your question about what you would change, I think that's the number one thing. I, I don't know how you'd place number one, though. That's the problem is what that opens up for is then having to differentiate between Newton and Young and Burrow and Tebow and, and all that. But, yeah, I mean, Joe, Joe Burrow was uh, fun as hell to watch. I mean, all these guys were – but he was uh, the swagger, the the missing piece that LSU needed to put it, uh, the whole product over the top. And, yeah, quarterback was not a strength for them per se compared to their wide receivers or their secondary, certainly, or other position groups. But 
he all of a sudden brought that and raised that level up to where it did match all those other talented groups and even went above those in some cases. And he was just freaking amazing uh, during the yeah, national championship the run. By storm I mean, they that crushed yeah. people. Like, yeah. they just, like, they overwhelmed people. And, uh, I mean, I remember them just beating the brakes off of Oklahoma in the playoff and just not – I remember just being gobsmacked by – how out of control that got, how quickly that got. I mean, it was totally uncompetitive. Uh, so, yeah, Burrow was was amazing. That was – I mean, all of these remind me kind of the same, like, meteor flashing across the sky type of moments. But, yeah, he was he was a little bit more recent, and, and that was a, an incredible run. And we'll always have the gif of him smoking the sogi in the locker room afterwards and Joe Cool and all those things. And now, um, unlike – well, everybody listed above him. I think he's just scratching the surface of his NFL career. Baker's still around. He needs to stay healthy. But he does need to stay healthy after injuries here lately. And uh, if he can, then he's going to be really special. And to Baker's credit, he's still hanging around and just came off of one of his best years yep. in the NFL. Hey, so he just extended it. He got, he's yeah. going to get a new contract out of that. Yeah, for sure. He, uh, he's, he's hanging around a lot longer than I thought he would. And he's doing it emphatically with uh, what he did with Tampa Bay this past season. Deshaun Watson, somebody asked earlier, did he not win two national titles? No. Well, he, he won one. He's the one that threw a touchdown pass. I forgot the name. And it was against uh, Alabama at the end of the game. Deshaun Watson at Clemson is at number six. Remember when Clemsoning meant falling spe or failing spectacularly on the big stage, Watson came to town, flipped Dabble Sweeney's program from good to elite, championship game, then winning the next year after being a part of it the year before. Look, if they had played Deshaun Watson against FSU in the game the year before in 2014, uh, if they had, like, if Dabo could have, I mean, it, it took that game to get him past the true freshman don't play. You know, we're we're doing this, like, and he's always been the traditional dude. Um, but he didn't play in that game in Florida State 1 when Jameis was suspended uh, in a really sloppy game. Had he played him in that game, uh, Clemson might have won the ACC. Like Florida State's 27 and 0 start to Jameis Winston's career probably doesn't happen because Deshaun Watson, when he would put him in in spots in that game, was electric. Uh, but they were kind of he was trying to stick to his plan there. But you know, on after that, he he's the dude who flipped the the ACC from FSU to Clemson. That was Deshaun Watson, and he was he was electric and really good. Um, and yeah, I mean, got them to a national championship and he's the one who changed it from, you know, it's not falling down. It's like, holy cow, here they come. Yeah. I mean, a disruptor to the Alabama dynasty, yep. right? Uh, yep. Without Clemson jumping in there. I mean, who knows what we were in store for, but uh, it was still pretty good regardless of that, obviously. But they at least were some disruptive forces in, in what was otherwise kind of Alabama dominance. And yeah, I mean, terrific player. Hunter Renfro was the play. That That's was the exactly right. That was the big play, um, and and all these guys have had those moments, but that one obviously is uh, just an incredible uh, all timer for for Clemson football and athletics. And uh, yeah, that was a, a great run. Uh, he was a great player, and you know we'll see uh, what the rest of his career holds. But uh, certainly, I don't, I don't know though. I don't really view him the same way as top five though. And I, I mean, I probably should, and maybe it's just maybe I watch those top five a bit more. Um, but certainly uh, above the rest of that list, that national title and just his overall play, uh, six is, yeah, Deshaun Watson's deserving of that. All right, we're going to do the top ten. Kyler Murray, another transfer. Started at A&M, of course. That's back during the Kevin Sumlin years, and he ended up leaving. So did Kyle Allen. Was it Kyle Allen that left, too? Yep. And then obviously Johnny Manziel was right before that. Kyler Murray, Oklahoma. Uh, I am still amazed at how well, and I know it's not been always good, in, in the NFL, his size, one thing I learned about him, it doesn't matter. The guy produces, he can put up numbers, and he was electric at Oklahoma. Yeah, no, I uh... – he was he was really amazing. I love how it says Texas A&M slash Oklahoma on the article, just to make Texas A&M fans yeah. realize that one of the best college quarterbacks uh, of the of the century so far uh, is was at your program, and yeah, figure out a way to screw that up. So, well, I'm sure I mean, Kyler may have had a little bit. To uh, do Kyler, you got to have a little and, bit of concert, and, uh, a little bit Kevin, of Kevin. Yeah, uh, yeah, his dad like had a little bit of that uh, to do it, but. Uh, yeah, he was he was so much fun to watch. I think I said this when we talked about Kyler the last time. I was at the first game he played uh, at A and M, and I remember thinking like, "Holy cow, uh, this is this is going to be fun. This is really going to be fun." And then for whatever reason, that was when Kevin Sumlin kind of started to fall off a little bit, and 
And there you go. I think it sounds from what Johnny said the other day. He's partying too much, yeah. just like his players were. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Johnny referenced that. Not that, that that was the entire reason for the downfall, but uh, that and ego, uh, that someone wanted to take the credit for what was being done there, uh, not for Kingsbury or not for Johnny. Um, and that's Johnny talking. But, uh, yeah, Kyler was uh, great at Oklahoma. I mean uh, – you know, it's for the for the for those guys that little Heisman run of quarterbacks. The only thing is, none of them won national titles. That's exactly. I mean, right. none of them yep. did, and so that's that's the thing with those that Oklahoma run um, of just how special it was. But it should have been better because at least you know somebody jump up and win a Natty. And was that not Kyler that got smacked around by LSU? That was uh, Kyler, or was that Baker? I'm trying to remember. I think, that, I think it was Baker. Let me look that up. Yeah, I, I can't up. remember oh, exactly. I think Baker. I don't think Baker. I think he was 19? gone. Yeah, yeah, I think that was. Yeah, who was that? Who Baker was, that? was out, gone after seventeen. Yeah, uh, so it must have been Kyler uh, against LSU. But yeah, anyways, my memory. Was it Jalen Hurts? I don't think so. Okay. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, well, so that, it, yeah, it, Kyler it was, Murray. It was Jalen. It was Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just that didn't seem like it was him. But uh, Kyler was great. Uh, Heisman winner, obviously, and um, terrific player. But um, not having the national title, that stings. All right. So let's go to eight. A guy that came in, set the world on fire. Lamar Jackson won a Heisman. His last year did not. He was a part of the conversation. Lamar Jackson now part of the Ravens and what has been a, a, a very successful when it comes to winning games in the NFL. Still has that big nugget in the sky that he wants to get like any quarterback would, but Lamar Jackson, Louisville. Uh, an absolutely ridiculously electric player. And, you know, I... <laughs> I you know, again, didn't win a national title, but was a dude that you could not stop. And he was, golly, he was so good. Uh, I just remember thinking, like, you know, he put, uh, he made Louisville relevant and not just kind of a team that's in the middle. And, and look, Bobby Petrino, not there anymore, but uh, he was the guy who brought him in and recruited him and uh, got him out of Florida, which, you know, maybe should have been an indicator to the big three in Florida when the Heisman Trophy winner from Miami is playing at Louisville. Um, maybe you've lost your touch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was that to me. I remember thinking that like when Lamar Jackson started like really kind of popping off at Louisville, I remember looking him up and going, where's this kid from? It's like Miami. And you're like, how is he like in what era am I living in where he does not go to Florida state, Florida or Miami. And then that's when it kind of hit me like, Oh, we might be in the crap times. <laughs> and certainly they were. Yeah, I mean, to have a Heisman Trophy winner from Louisville was uh, pretty surprising. Just in, in this day and age, it's typically, you know, the guy's from Alabama or he's from LSU or he's from, you know, Oklahoma or wherever. Uh, so to put Louisville on the map like that was obviously a big deal. Incredible dual-threat quarterback, uh, can slice and dice you with his feet, uh, but also with his arm. And, uh, yeah, he was a ton of fun to watch and a superb athlete who's still doing his thing at a very high level and proving a lot of people – uh, not just wrong, but stupid uh, with their critiques of him uh, when it came to draft time and his ability to play the quarterback position in the NFL. But um, he's blown right past that, and that's an old conversation at this point. And, yeah, he was a lot of fun to watch. All right, and then nine from Oregon, Marcus Mariota from Oregon, uh, another dynamic player. Uh, I don't know how long his stats popped out, but he was there, helped Oregon turn the tables, was fantastic, Heisman Trophy, all of that, Mariota at number nine. Played for the national title and, and lost um, to Ohio State and Urban Meyer and Ezekiel Elliott in yep. that game in Dallas. Um, and, you know, he, he, was, he was really special. I don't know if I would put him above Jameis Winston on this list, although he did beat Jameis Winston on his way there. So maybe that's why uh, the difference is there. I know Jameis isn't too far away from him, so it's kind of splitting hairs. But, um, but yeah, I, I think that uh, – you know, he is one of the ones, he's the one I'm surprised just has not worked out all that well in the NFL because I thought he was going to be really good because it looked like he was really exploding and it just, it just hasn't worked out for him other than being a, a very serviceable and good backup to have, but not a guy you want, you know, doing all 16 or 17 games. Good player. I mean, that was a really good run for Oregon. Uh, fell short, obviously. And, um, yeah, he was, he was terrific. He was uh, very dynamic with his legs, but uh, an amazing thrower. I thought he would be much better in the NFL. Uh, Oregon's still searching for that national title, but he got them as, as close as, uh, as anybody and um, thought that they had a chance to, to go over the top but just wasn't in the cards. And, and yeah, it's, uh, it's a guy that was a lot of fun to watch. 
And um, I don't know in the grand scheme of things if I'd have him at nine, but at this point, I mean, it's yeah. like it doesn't really matter. Uh, so, yeah, that's he, he had a great run. All right. Did anybody here in the top ten not win the Heisman? I don't think so. Did Deshaun? Uh, no. No, he, he did didn't not. actually. Yeah. Okay. Not. All right. Vince Robert, didn't either. And neither did Vince right, Young. Yeah. And then, obviously, 05. Robert Griffin the third. You, you could sit there and say, but he played uh, outside of the top ten. What was he? Eight, nine, ten, uh, eight, nine, and ten, and then won the Heisman at eleven. Baylor had not been had not a, had a winning season in thirteen years. He came to town, turned it around under the Art Bryles run. Um, dynamic his senior year, um, just became a rock star. Was good. Was a highly recruited track athlete. Went to Houston. Ended up coming to Baylor. I don't know about top ten, but. He was a rock star in his senior year or his junior year before he left for the NFL was incredible. Well, look, if not for Robert Griffin III, and look, I'm sure our brows would have found somebody, but there's a stadium right over there that's built that is, exists because of him, because of a play he made against Oklahoma, right. because of all that. So, yeah, I think when you like take a program from total irrelevance and nothingness – into a place where they can build a new stadium, and then, and I say this with love, Baylor fans, turn them into a fan base that's completely entitled to think they should win the Big 12 every year, that's a miracle. Which he never did. No, no, but... It led to the momentum yeah, he's, with he's, Bryce Petty after He that, yeah. is the guy over everybody else when it comes to Baylor football, over any coach or whatever, because he was the player, he was the quarterback. He's the one who people now know that it's possible to do great things at Baylor in college football where, for a long time, that was not the belief. He's the guy who instilled that belief. That's why there's a statue of him over there, uh, because he was the one. Yeah, they were a total laughing stock prior to that. Um, I know just growing up in Texas that uh, they were a punchline, and I don't care about Singletary and what they did in the 70s and the 80s and Grant Taft. I, I say that not disrespectfully, but just growing up, that wasn't like, hey, I know they're really like the worst team in all of college athletics right now, but man, Singletary, like nobody was talking like that. It was just they were a punchline. And uh, without question, the worst team pretty much year in and year out in the state of Texas. And then he came in, and, and others as well. You mentioned, uh, obviously, Art Browles had a lot to do with that, and then a bevy of very talented wide receivers and others uh, sprinkled throughout the roster and lit the world on fire and uh, had an incredible run and still amazing that he was able to go and win the Heisman Trophy, being at, at a small school that not a lot of people had paid much attention to or, or thought much of, and uh, just shows you how... I mean, as far as improbable Heisman runs, that has to be near the top of the list. Absolutely. It I mean, started a run there, and I don't remember how many years this went, where the winner was not the favorite to start the year. In fact, he was not even really on the radar. He was good, but not on the radar. But if you had said to anybody in the 90s or in the 2000s that, you know, there's going to be a quarterback rolling in at Baylor that's going to win the Heisman you, Trophy, you just, you'd have been put in the mental institution because that just wasn't realistic. And then here he came and yep. uh, changed – the entire history of the program, really. I mean, without him, does any of what's happened since then happen? Probably not. Probably not. So, yeah, as far as a program changer or the most um, improbable Heisman runs, I think he would be much higher on this list. I think it's probably about right where he is. But, yeah, he came in and was a, was a game changer, and you just wish his health could have been a bit better throughout his entire career, college and pro because we didn't get to see nearly what we should have seen at the pro level especially. But, you know, that's the breaks. He was a wiry guy, and that was just kind of – that came with the territory and his style. But, man, when he was healthy and able to, to move around, he was so dynamic Ooh. and special, yeah. Yeah, and, and of course, they, they flung it around, and he threw that deep fade probably better than anyone I've ever seen, uh, in, even now in, in college football. Now, I'm going to mention some names – that we're outside the top ten. We don't have a lot of time here. We're gonna Colt McCoy, I think, has an argument to be among the top ten. But did not win the national title, no matter what. He didn't, but he put up massive numbers over the years and wins. Remember, he retired or left well, the all-time most wins among college quarterbacks in a career until Kellen Moore broke that record. Yes, the question a second ago about did everybody on that list win the Heisman? Obviously, wasn't paying very good attention because there were a couple guys. Um, but those two guys also, Deshaun Watson and Vince Young, won a national championship. Yeah, right. Uh, 
Colt didn't win either. And so I think that probably knocks him in comparison to those guys. But what you point out is, yeah, he's right there on that same level, basically, numbers-wise, wins-wise. Uh, he was terrific. He was durable. And it's unfortunate maybe he would have had a national title had he – not been hurt against Alabama. I know Texas fans swear up and down they were going to win that game if Colt doesn't get hurt, and maybe they're right. Uh, we'll never know, but uh, he would have had that and you know, was very much in the Heisman mix for a couple of years there. Uh, so, yeah, Colt was, was damn good and just didn't, just didn't quite get those ultra achievements but did everything else you could possibly do and is definitely one of the best quarterbacks we've seen. And then uh, we, we don't have time because we have a guest coming up, Tarleton State's new director of athletics, but names that were not a part of it. Uh, the one year of Manziel, uh, Sam Bradford, who was phenomenal at Oklahoma. You talk about the lightning in a bottle with Johnny. Like, there was, yeah. there's not much like that. I mean, RG3's bursting onto the scene. Um, Burrow. Burrow, but yep. like Johnny. Cam, kinda, Cam Newton. Yeah, Cam Newton, but Johnny's right there in that mix. Might too. have been easier to do the rankings of like lightning in the bottle co compared to career or whatever. Jameis Winston. Uh, and then you have the more recent names that are kind of stacked up here between 19 and 23. Jaden Daniels, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Tua, Tagabiola, and Caleb Williams. He jumped over Sam Bradford, too, in there. No, I said Sam oh, Bradford. Okay. Yeah, I didn't hear you. yeah, when yeah. you went no, into your I, comments I, about Mount I think it's Man. hard to separate a lot the the, the recent guys because they're like they're – their stats all overlap, you know. Now, um, you know, Tua and Bryce Young won titles. Caleb did not, and that's the thing that's all. And and, and then had a, a, you know, the the team had a really rough year this last year. C.J. Stroud was fantastic, but just didn't win a title and didn't win a Heisman either. But still, when you look at him, like as far as his overall career as a starter, was pretty impeccable. Uh, all right, other teams either who are now a part of the Big Twelve or were that. Or have quarterbacks listed. Case Keenum, 26. Jalen Hurts, 27, was at OU. Pat White was tremendous at West Virginia at 30. Uh, Jason White, one of those early runs under Stoops at 36. Graham Harrell, yeah, Graham Harrell, 38th, Texas Tech. Chase Daniel was a part of the Big 12 when he was at Missouri, 39. Landry Jones, yet another Oklahoma quarterback at 43. K-State's Colin Klein at 45. Eric Crouch at 49. Nebraska. And I think there's a few others. I'm just going to name the names. Mason Rudolph, Patrick Mahomes, Todd Reese, Max Duggan. Uh, Andy Dalton was not at... He was not a part of the Big 12, but now TCU is. Kevin Cobb, Houston. Brad Smith, Missouri, was at in the Big 12. Geno Smith, Brandon Wheaton, uh, are some of the other names that also were involved. Zach Wilson in the top 70, BYU, although not yet but, a part of the Big 12. By the way, they've given, the Jets have given Zach Wilson